Hello, in this lecture we will work an assignment that will be very similar to the homework. The numbers will change, the format will remain much the same. We want to keep in mind our two objectives. One will be to learn the principles of the accounting. The second will be to learn Excel within these accounting classes. Remember that this is where we want to learn the basics of Excel. 95% of the Excel that you will be using will be learned in this type of format. When you take the Excel class, what you really want to look to pick up is the added formulas, the types of things that could really add to a worksheet. When you think about tables and entering numbers, we're going to learn most of that, much of that here in the accounting classes. So with that in mind, we can take a look at the sheet here. We've got our accounting equation up top. That equation being assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. We're going to put our journal entries in the blue area right there. And we're going to post those to the center column, our adjusting column here. So what we're going to look at at this point is we have a trial balance, which includes a chart of accounts on this side. We want to start to memorize the chart of accounts and see them in the same way. So we see these familiar accounts that we have seen. We can see that there's green zeros over here related to cash, receivables, and supplies because those are assets. We can see that the accounts payable and the unearned revenue have uh, yellow or orange zeros indicated their liabilities. Owner's equity has a blue zero and the income accounts, revenue and expenses have blue accounts that are slightly different because they are all part of owner's equity in our equation here. We're going to represent the fact that we are in balance by saying that the debits minus the credits will be in balance. And we're going to start working with the debits and credits here. And we're going to be able to see everything with a trial balance. So you want to keep in mind the trial balance over here at all times. Anytime you work any problem, I would have a trial balance in front of you, even if it's not the trial balance within the problem you are working, because it can tell you a lot about the types of accounts that we are using. We'll discuss that more as we go. We we'll also have a recap of the accounting equation, and we'll take a look at the effect of each transaction on the accounting equation. So the first one says that owner of um, owner A deposits cash into the business checking account 100,000. So the owner puts money into the checking account. We're going to go through this series of questions every time we make a transaction. One is cash affected. In this case, money went into the equity account. So yes, cash is affected. Cash has a debit balance, so we're just going to have to start to memorize the fact that cash has a debit balance, assets have debit balances. We're going to represent debits with both in this section in the debit column, as well as being positive numbers versus bracketed or negative numbers in this worksheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this cash account and paste it over here. We could type it here. I'm going to copy it first. I'm going to start to uh, use the copy and paste functions. There are different ways to paste. So we're going to use a paste special function. So I'm going to put my cursor on cash, right click. I'm going to copy it there in this window. Then we'll obviously we'll see the uh, ants here running. And that means that it has been copied. It's in the clipboard. We're going to put our cursor in C5, right click. And instead of pasting this way, which pastes everything, including the format, I'm going to paste the values only. Pasting one, two, three, values only. If we do that, then uh, we keep the blue format there. So then we know that we're going to debit 100,000. I'm going to put that in the debit column as well as keep it as unbracketed or positive numbers. Once again, I'm not putting any commas or anything here. I'm in the cell rather than on the cell. If we hit enter, then it records it there. Put the comma in for us because of the formatting of the cell. We know that we're also going to have a credit because every account is going to have two transactions. Uh, I mean, every transaction is going to have two accounts and every account is going to have an equal number of debits and credits. So if there's only two accounts affected, like the majority of accounts that we will be starting with, then if we debit something, then we're also going to have to credit something. We are going to represent credits here in the credit column, as well as with a negative or bracketed number. So I'm going to put a negative 100,000. You may see debits and credits represented slightly different ways in different areas. That's going to be part of our challenge when we work with different systems, is to see, are we talking about debits and credits? Are we talking with plus and minuses? How are they being recorded? We are going to use Excel's use of formulas in terms of formulas using plus and minus as well as debits and credits to uh, use this worksheet effectively. So then the other question will be, what's the other account that will be affected? We know it's going to be a credit. What will be credited? Well, who put it in there? The owner. If we look at our chart of accounts on our trial balance and we go through them, we can see mm, owner's equity possibly might be the one. 
So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to say copy here, right clicking and copy. We see the running ants. So I'm going to put my cursor here on uh, C6, right click. We're going to paste it one, two, three. Once again, you could type it in here. That would be fine. I like to uh, copy and paste it. But I think that's a little bit faster. Then we're going to post that to the blue columns. We're only going to be working in the blue columns in this problem. So we could go to the cache and the adjusting column. We have zeros at the beginning balance. We're going to put our adjustments here. It will then add up on this side. So I'm going to go to H6. We're going to say equals. And then I'm going to go ahead and point to this 100,000 related to cash, which we want to post there. So I'm going to click on here. We'll see the D5 show up here. Then when we hit enter, it's going to go from zero up to the ending balance of 100,000 like so. So there's our debit balance is now recorded. We've only recorded half the transaction, so our debits do not equal our credits. In this column, I'm going to represent credits with negative numbers, and we're going to represent it being in balance by having the debits minus the credits. So we're going to post the other side here. Once we do so, then it should be back in balance. In this section here, we're only going to have equal signs and pluses. We're not going to need any negative numbers in this column. So I'm going to be over here in the capital count. That's this count. This is posting it to the entries column, we're going to say equals. I'm going to point to that negative 100,000 represented a credit for us. And when I hit enter, this will go, this is going up. That's not going down in a negative direction. That's going up in a positive direction, but in a credit direction for us. Excel sees it as a negative 100,000. We're using it as a credit balance in this case. And we can represent the fact that we are in balance now with the formula being the debits represented by positive numbers minus the credits represented by negative numbers equals zero. So these green zeros mean that we are in balance in that 100 debit or positive minus 100 negative credit is in balance. So this is going to be a, a faster way to see that we are in balance. We can basically see everything that happens from this trial balance using this type of formula. And now we can take a look at what happens in terms of the accounting equation. We have our accounting equation up here, and so we can see what happens there if we wanted to look at the answer down here. So how could we do that? Well, if I highlight these and I delete it, of course, those go away. And if I say, well, what's going to happen to assets here? Let me undo that and say, hmm, assets went up by 100,000 because this is adding up these three cells. So that means that assets are increasing, of course, because cash went up. Liabilities, I can see right here, has no effect. There's no accounts in there, no effect. So that's going to be drop down, none. And then if this went up, then I know this has to go up. But once again, we could check that. If I delete that, it goes to zero. And if I undo it, equity goes up. Why? Because it's the sum of these accounts there. And we're not representing it in a negative number up here. We're representing it in terms of plus and minus. Remember, that's a credit for us in this formula. So this is going to increase as well. All right, let's look at B. B says receive cash from client for work done. So is cash affected? It is affected. Now we can see that now that there's something in cash, we can see that it has a debit balance. So that's the next question we're going to ask. Does cash have a debit or credit balance? Has a debit balance. How do we know? Because it has no brackets around it. Bracketed accounts are negative. Our credits, non-brackets are debits. And there it's a debit. How do we make it go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case will be another debit. So I'm going to right click on cash. I'm going to put that on the top here in C8. Right click, paste one, two, three. The debits will generally go on top. That's just out of tradition. So we're generally going to put the debits on top all the time. And then we will have 10,000 in cell C8 and enter. If we have a debit, we're also going to have a credit. Over here, we're going to represent the credits in the credit column, and we're going to make them negative with a negative 10,000. So I'm going to represent the credits with a negative. The only question then is, what is that account there? And what did we pay? What did we receive cash for? We did work and therefore earned revenue. If we look at our chart of accounts down here, we look for revenue. Revenue is here. And uh, if we, we're going to have to start to know what type of account revenue is. Revenue is a is an income account and it has a credit balance. We can't tell that they're here yet because nothing has been posted, but we 
it does have a credit balance and we can see that we must credit it because we debited cash. So if, if revenue is the other account that is affected, then it must be a credit. So I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put my cursor under the cash in C9, right click, paste it, one, two, three. Okay, so then we're going to post this information to the accounts here and here in the blue column. There's already something in cash. Therefore, what we have to do is add to this formula. So in order to add to it, I'm going to double click on it. That'll drill down in it. We've got D5. We can see what that represents over here. I'm going to put my cursor after the five, say plus. Then I'm going to point to the other cash account being in D8. And now we have D5 plus D8. When we hit enter, this is a debit. That's a debit. It's going to make the debit go up in the debit direction to 110. Now we're out of balance, of course, by that 10,000 until we record the revenue side, which will be recorded in cell H11. So in H11, I'm going to say equals, going to point to that 10,000 credit. This is a credit, it's a zero, but it's a credit balance account. It's going to go up in the credit direction, put us back in balance. It's going to bring net income, go up. So cat revenue went up. Remember, Excel sees that as a negative number. We see it as a credit. The credit went up in this case. And if we look at the net income, we see that net income went up because if I double click on this, we can see that revenue went up. Net income is revenue minus expenses. Therefore, revenue has increased in this problem. Then we can take a look at our accounting equation. What happened to assets? Well, once again, we could delete it. Take a look at our formula up here and see what happens. It goes to 100. If I undo that, meaning I post this, then assets went up to 110. Yeah, because we got more cash, that makes sense. Assets are going to increase. Nothing happens to liabilities because these are only two liabilities. Nothing's in there, so that must be nothing. And then if this increased and nothing happened here, then this must be increased. But once again, I can check that. Take a look at the equity. Delete that. Take a look at its 100. Undo. Up to 110. That increased. That makes sense because revenue went up. So we've got the 100 that we put in plus the 110. Gives, gives us plus the 10 gives us the 110 so C then says paid cash to employees so first question is cash affected and the answer will be yeah we paid cash therefore if we take a look at cash we can now see now that there's something in it we can see that cash has a debit balance how do we know because it has a uh, no brackets around it unlike the credits which do so this that means that according to this trial balance this is a debit how do we make something go down? Because we know it needs to go down because we paid something. We do the opposite to whatever type of account it is. It's a debit. Therefore, we're going to credit it to make it go down. So I'm going to copy this cash. I'm going to put it on the bottom. So I'm going to put it at the bottom out of tradition. I'm going to right click. I'm going to paste it. One, two, three. It doesn't really matter down here as long as we put it in the credit column. But we want to get in the best practice of putting the credits on the bottom for the most part. Now, later on, if we're doing a long journal entry, I would recommend putting it in whatever order helps you to create the journal entry and, and make it make sense to you. But uh, typically, we want to put the credits on the bottom. So I'm still going to think about cash first, even though it's a credit and therefore on the bottom in this case. I'm going to put my cursor in the uh, credit column in E12, and I'm going to type in the credit of negative, in this case, 600. So if we credit something, then we're also going to have to debit something for 600. So note that putting the cash in there first, even though it's a credit, will often be helpful because we, we're going to work with cash more often. Therefore, if we put the cash in there first, then it'll tell us what the credit and debit will be.